Chidu Box is a 3D modeling slicer used for 3D printers. It has a paid and free version which is available at www.cheetobox.com. This general usage tutorial will cover the options for the free version because I ain't got no damn money. The installation is a standard DXE download that you run and choose a destination to install it at. For Windows users, the default installation path will be your program files folder. I recommend highlighting and copying this URL to your clipboard with Control c as we'll use this URL later in this video to make our lives easier. I'm using the app version 2.0 and when launching the application for the first time, you'll be prompted to select your preferred language, the color scheme of the GUI, the model of your 3D printer, in my case I have a frozen Mighty 8K, and finally a menu where you can change your slice settings as well as select the type of resin that you are using. I have the Aqua Gray Resin 8K which was selected already, probably as it's one of the recommended resins for this printer. Normally I would also change some of these print settings such as my exposure time and bottom exposure time, but unfortunately at the time of this recording Cheeto Box 2.0 has a lot of bugs and it does not retain these exposure changes after relaunching the application. If you played around with the configuration settings and don't like the results when printing, you can restore to the default settings by going to the menu and then to help and then factory settings. To complete the initial setup, I recommend associating your OBJ and STL files so they're open with Cheeto Box by default. To do this, go to your file repository and right click one of your files, then navigate to properties, change, choose an app on your PC, and then navigate to where you installed Cheetah Box. If you copied the URL from the installation section previously, you can paste it at the top of your file explorer window. Otherwise, the default path for the free version should be c colon slash program files slash cbd slash Cheetah Box. For Mac and Linux users, you're on your own. I got rid of those OS's a long time ago. But once done, when you launch an STL or OBG file, It'll automatically open in Cheetah Box, unless you're using version 2.0 because this is another bug where it doesn't work like it's supposed to. For previous versions, it'll work as expected. If you're using version 2.0, then you'll have to open Cheetah Box and then manually drag the files in, at least for now. Next, we'll discuss hollowing models and adding drainage holes. You don't have to do this, however, doing so has several benefits. First, if you hollow out the model, you'll use less resin when printing, directly saving you money. The model will also be lighter, which is great if you'll spend hours holding it while painting. To hollow a model, select it in Cheeto Box and click Hollow on the top menu. I typically choose 2mm as the thickness. Any thinner and the model may become too friable, leading to easier breaks, though feel free to experiment. For larger busts and giant miniatures, I also recommend selecting Cross 3D for the infill structure option. Instead of having a large empty cavity inside, there'll be a crisscrossing lattice work to help provide durability, though at the cost of a little more resin. This is what it would look like once we hollow it with the infill option. If we did not select the infill, this model would have a large empty gap inside. If you choose not to use the infill, I would recommend slightly increasing the outer wall thickness to about 3 or 4 millimeters for large busts and models. Now that the model has been hollowed, we'll need to create holes that will allow us to remove excess resin trapped within. To do so, click Dig Hole on the top menu. Set your diameter and depth, with the depth being a little more than what you chose for the outer wall thickness when you hollowed the model out from the previous step. I usually add two or three holes to make it easier to remove the trapped resin. If you want to easily plug the holes you dug later, make sure you have retaining piles selected. This will add the hole you removed to your 3D printing plate so you can print it and use it to fill these holes. When digging your holes, you'll typically want to do this on the bottom of the model where no one can see it. 
Just keep in mind how you're going to base the model or the bust. If you remove most of the bottom by adding holes, this can create weak points or make it difficult to actually add a stand. Speaking of adding a stand, this model did not come with one, so I'll import a basic shape to print along with him. I do so by clicking on the option Standard Parts in the top right. I chose a basic geometry shape of a hexagonal prism, and I scale it up to size, and then hollow it and dig holes for it as well. At this point, the bust is ready for supports, though I could add more to the plate if I wanted to be more efficient and print multiple things with this project. Before I would add more, I like to use the auto layout on the top menu as it lets me quickly move these items around for a clean grouping, freeing up more space for me to add other models. Now let's look at the options for scaling and mirroring. One thing I like to use these options for is that when I'm printing a horde of models, such as these goblins, I tend to wish there was even more variety in their poses, as opposed to just printing these same four miniatures over and over. So to fabricate a little variety, I select all of the models, copy and paste them, and then I select half of them. I then click Scale with Lock Ratio selected, and change one of the percentages to something slightly larger or smaller before mirroring them. This will add a little variation at first glance, making it seem like there's more variety than there really is. The scaling option is also great for turning large models into smaller scale miniatures or vice versa. Next, let's talk about the rotate command. This option allows you to, well, rotate the model. Here, I will rotate this dragon skull terrain 90 degrees as well as stand this runic rock on end. The rotation is based on the X, Y, and Z axis. If you forget which letter applies to which axis, there's a small visual representation in the bottom right corner of your screen as a guide. Next, let's take a quick look at some basic hotkey commands that I use the most. I'm only going to show the commands for PC users, but at the end of this video I will show you where to check the full list of hot commands for your chosen OS. Control and left click. When you left click to select models, it'll cycle through them and deselect the previous. To add more to your selection, hold control and left click the next model. Holding control and then left clicking an already selected model will then deselect it. Pressing Ctrl A will select all models on the plate, and then pressing Ctrl A again will deselect all of the models. Pressing Ctrl C will copy a model, and then you can press Ctrl V to paste that copy. You can use the delete key to remove any of the selected models. Control Z will undo an action. The default is set to remember up to the last 20 actions, but you can change this under the Settings and System menu. Control M will access the Move window. Control I will access the Mirror window. Control R will access the Rotate window. Control Alt S will access the scale window. And Control S will save your progress. To view or edit your full list of hotkey commands, navigate to the main menu and select Help, and then select Shortcut. Previously, I mentioned several times about bugs in this current 2.0 version. When an update is finally available, you can get it by going to the main webpage for Cheetah Box, or you can go to Help and check for updates. Finally, I wanted to mention the last two very important options that I'm purposely leaving out of this video, as they'll be covered in depth in two future videos, with this relating to adding supports 
and the final slice checks and configurations. And that's going to bring this tutorial to its end. I hope you learned something or were inspired to start your own journey into the world of 3D printing. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.